Hello, so this is the 10th video in the FLTK Rust series. Uh, the idea of this video is to improve the uh, editor example, which uh, which is in the uh, FLTK repo, FLT, the uh, FLTK RS repo. So, uh, for example, we can add uh, drag and drop. Uh, I've noticed some bugs, for example, when we do car cargo run, and uh, if we uh, don't modify anything in the application and exit, we still get uh, this dialog, would you like to save your work? So uh, we can actually fix this, and we'll see what else we can do. So the first thing <coughs> that we can fix is this. So uh, this the start of the application, we can consider for any changes that uh, saved is true. So that means uh, when we start the application and if we close directly, it can close. It doesn't uh, actually prompt us to save or not. So uh, also if we quit from here. Oh uh, yeah, we can also increase the spacing between these, uh, the menu bar itself. We can also re reduce the size of the menu bar so uh, let's see for example here uh, the size of the menu bar so let's make it a sys menu bar we've seen in a previous video that uh, a sys menu bar on mac os gives us the uh, menu bar on the top of the screen on other systems it resolves to a normal menu bar so this is Windows, and we get the normal menu bar. If it were Mac OS, we'll get the system menu bar, which appears on the top of the screen. So uh, let's close this now, and uh, we can actually, uh, for example, uh, reduce the size of the menu bar, the uh, height of the menu bar, let's say uh, 35, and then the text editor, uh, let's say it uh, starts from 35, okay, so we have to increase the height here to 65, 60. So let's just check this. Okay, I think this looks a bit better, and we can increase the uh, distance between these uh, options here. So if you see, for example, in the uh, menu bar, we are actually adding these options. One thing we can do is uh, give the... Uh, so each of the menu bar here uh, items gets a shortcut. So for example, for new, from new, we can actually press Control N and we actually uh, get a new file. Control O, we get a... Uh, we open a file, Control S, etc. We can actually also uh, get the tab working, the uh, alt working. So we can actually add here, uh, let's say, we'll do a batch change here. So alt F, this should give us the alt F. So you see the underlined F here. So if we press alt F, the menu open. You can do the same for edit and help. So uh, let's go to edit here, also do a batch change here, so edit, and the ampersand, and for the help we can also add the H, and to increase the uh, distance between these uh, items here, you can actually insert tabs, so for example, Let's see here, uh, anything starting with an ampersand, which is basically every, every item on the menu. And batch change. And here we can add uh, a tab, for example. And that's okay, so 211. <coughs> Oh, yeah. So this has to be the same also.
Okay, so now we get a wider uh, menu bar. We about we can also add another tab, but uh, I think it looks okay. And uh, let's also handle drag and drop. So if you go, for example, here and try to drag any file into uh, the editor, you get the path of the file itself. So let's change it and make it so that when we drag a file to the editor, it actually reads the file and uh, outputs it here. So uh, we can go ahead, for example, and uh, actually handle the drag and drop for the editor itself. So here we have the editor, which emits uh, whenever uh, it's changed. Oh yeah, so you can actually set the trigger for the uh, widget itself. So for example, for buttons, uh, the trigger is uh, the, uh, the click itself. For uh, the editor, we made the trigger, uh, the change, the value or the content of the text widget. So uh, we can either create another item in the messages here and handle the, uh, the drag and drop in the uh, event loop. Or we can use the handle method. So let's use the handle method. So let's say editor handle. So this takes a box closure and an event. So for the moment, let us just print the uh, the actual event of the drag and drop, so let's say uh, event here, and we'll also print the text of the event, so we can print here uh, event text, which is present in the uh, app module. So here we've imported everything from the app module, so we should get the uh, event itself. So or the text itself. So when we, whenever we uh, try to uh, drag and drop something, we get the event and the text, which is uh, of the event itself. So cargo run, and uh, yeah. So the handle method needs requires a uh, to return uh, a, a boolean, which indicates that the event was handled. So let's just here return false. This is uh, just checking the uh, event in the event text. So here, when we, whenever we move, for example, we get these events here, move, uh, focus, and focus, etc. So uh, we'll check here, for example, the cargo time. Zero here. We also need this. Oops. Okay, and here, we get a DND, which is a drag and drop. So basically, it starts as a uh, DND enter, DND drag, DND release, and paste. So basically, uh, we'll just handle these events, and the rest uh, of the events uh, will leave unhandled. So let us uh, start matching here. Match event and let us say. For any other events, just false, they're unhandled, and the event, let us start with the ND enter. So we'll just say true, which means it's handled, event uh, DND drag, true, event DND release, true. And we actually start getting the name of the file with the paste event. So, event paste. And we'll actually get the file here. So, say true. And we'll get the event text. So, that path equals 
let us say it's the event text which is a normal string we actually need to make it a path so that path equals uh, std path path buff from path and wrap I think Maybe. Okay, so we don't need that wrap. <coughs> and we can actually, uh, in the rest of the application, we use uh, the uh, standard li libraries uh, fs read and fs write. But actually, FLTK also offers the, uh, the buffer uh, load file method so so this is the buffer that's associated with the editor which we actually move here we can actually get it back using this method that buff equals editor buffer and uh, I'm not sure what this returns on wrap maybe Okay, so now we can actually buff, uh, load file, and this takes a uh, path. Unwrap. We'll just assert that the uh, path exists. Okay, so this builds without errors, and we can try to actually drag something here now. And this works. So, uh, okay, so that was basically it for this uh, tutorial. Uh, let me check if there's also anything else we can add. I think a lot of the things here uh, might benefit from refactoring. Uh, yeah, in the uh, <coughs> macOS example, uh, actually changing the menu bar to a system menu bar exposes a uh, space uh, at the beginning of the application, since uh, basically this area here would be basically just part of the window and we'll have the, uh, the system menu bar so we can actually use some conditional compilation here um, let us see um, the text editor so, oops We'll try to uh, editor uh, editor resize. Just actually uh, say five five seven ninety for the width and for the height five thirty five uh, ninety five. So. Uh, of course, I'll have to check this on macOS just to uh, be sure that uh, this displays correctly. And uh, otherwise, uh, I think it should be okay. So uh, we've decreased this by uh, 30. So yeah, maybe 590. So that was basically it for this video. I'm um, not sure if there's anything else I can, uh, you can also add some spaces between the uh, main items in the menu bar, but I think it looks okay. And uh, if we try to uh, get some source files here, we actually get our source file. So. Uh, 
that was basically it for this uh, video. Uh, I hope you enjoyed, and uh, hopefully, uh, create more videos soon. Thanks for watching again. Bye.